the house tonight. Your boy Opsy, all right, all right. Your boy, uh, yeah, I'm in here, I'm in here, yeah. <laughs> hey, that boy got, that boy said about it, got him, oh my goodness. Anyway, it's your boy Opsy, and I'm gonna say Opsy, I'm gonna change it to the Opsy, it's to the Opsy. Yes, yes, that's what I've been thinking about. Well, the day is Tuesday, which is one thing Tuesday. So that's what I've been doing on one thing Tuesdays is I listen to the one thing and I recap the one thing from yesterday podcast. Hope you guys been listening to the podcast. Hope you guys got the book. So check it out. And I do this so I can stay on track, right? Always putting something in positive every single day of the week. Not let a day go by that I'm not laying something positive because I got so much negative that's coming in, right? So, what he was talking about today was uh, this lady that wrote this book, something about necessary candor or something like that, about telling people the truth instead of just doing stuff to support our ego or being liked by everybody, especially if you're in a leadership position. Especially if it's junk. She said, now, she went through the whole thing, came out at the end, and she said, hey, look, here's a question. And that question is, uh, count the cost. Is this worth me saying something about it? Because every time, man, being candid, can she said change it to just being rude you know telling it like it is you know not doing it in love but just a, a, a ticket to be rude you know because a lot of times people think that they're helping with the constructive criticism but really it's just a pass for their ego to uplift themselves or belittle someone else so you gotta be careful. It's always that fine line when she start wielding that power. You see what I'm saying? So basically, what she was saying is that, uh, but this new book she was talking about was in the workplace. You know how to recognize being able to stand up to injustices. Like one of the things she did was um, a lady was, you know, especially women or guys or whatever it is, a lady that was in the workplace. May I have to slip my little thing up in? Let's see what this thing be like. Let's see what that and that get in the right spot. Oh yeah, got it. So they got in the right spot. So here's the thing that the guy was saying. She went into a board meeting room. She was the head lady with the presentation, but she went in with another guy, right? That guy sat to her left. And they sat kind of in the middle of the table, right? So when they came in, the other team came in they sat from the, across from that guy and everybody else sat in on the guy's side so she was left dangling out there and as they asked questions they was addressing it to, the, to that guy and she was the main one that could get the account so that guy stood up and said hey maybe we need to switch seats to let them know hey she has authority I'm passing that authority over to her She's the one y'all need to be talking to. And they switch seats and they end up getting the deal. But that guy kind of stood up, you know, in the workplace. So, the other time she said that she was at a place where they religious beliefs, uh, they want women working. So, when she went to the building, there were no women working in the building. So, she said everything was going pretty. She knew that was one of the cases. But then she said, uh, really got awkward when she had to use the bathroom. She said, when I had to use the bathroom, they did not have a women's bathroom. So everybody panicked, hey, you can't go in the men's bathroom, can't get it done. Hey, we found you a spot that you could go to the bathroom in. She said, it was a, a mop bucket in a mop closet. She said, I'm not going in no mop closet and use bathroom in a bucket. She said, look, so she looked towards her partner said, hey, look, won't you go ahead and, uh, won't you go ahead and, uh, tip that over. Won't you go ahead and help me out here? 
he was like, hey, I'm trying to mention me to get in there. I said, no. Uh, she said, well, the only other option is we can reconvene in two hours. I go to the hotel, come back two hours. They say, hey, look, that's a good idea. We'll wait. And they waited and end up getting the deal. She said, man, it may be with women. It may be with men. It may have said something that didn't kind of pop off right. And that's being able to recognize that in the workplace. But, you know, I was just thinking about that candy. You know, the guy got the one thing. He was saying that, uh, he said, we normally press people when they fight for their weaknesses and we trying to fight for their greatness. We're trying to push them to the next level. And, of course, their ego don't want to go to that next level because he can lose. It's risky. He can look bad. That's what the ego is doing. Yeah, it don't want to look bad. So the next time, so what I'm trying to do is when I'm making decisions and I feel that fear in there, I say, hey, look, I, it's that ego stirring up in there. I see you. I see what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do. Let me, let me check out what you're trying to do. What you're trying to put me through. And I, I look at it, you know, because that's my cue. I don't say that's your cue to go ahead and press on. Because the more time you get that ego or fear, the stronger it gets. Because it's like it's like it's it's like a sleeping beast, right? It's there, but then at certain times it wakes up. Then when it wakes up, it start that time gives it time to fully awaken. Once it's fully awakened, tough so you gotta starve it when it's waking up you just gotta go ahead and put it back to sleep the old one two see what I'm saying put it back to sleep put the leash on it make sure it's chained down I always tell my my kids I said, well, how, why are we supposed to do this I gave them a challenge right I say the challenge is all those anime movies and shows you watch they all all the shows depict the same thing of this inner conflict and how did they solve it then you can use those cues and clues to how you can solve it that's what the one thing for is to take some of the anxiety out of it by having that focus and that clarity with the accountability which is the 411 so when I go in and work with that I'm going to pull out the 411 look at it I know what's on it, right? But I had been keeping track. That was a new thing I was supposed to be doing, keeping track of the number of kind of calls. But I let that thing talk me out of it. So we're finna get back on it today. Get back on it, get in it, because I know how I'm supposed to be monitoring and, 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 and counting the calls. Now, that was part of the metric. If I made these five contacts every day, it would lead me to where I want to be. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've I, I been wanting to do one from home as well, too. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. Got to have a net and be able to incorporate and delegate and marshal that energy. Last night, we were standing around the table, the whole family. I was looking at houses, son. He was looking at some stuff, and I said, "Man, all this power right here. Everybody's in here. You know, I was just relishing the moment. You know, staying in the moment, enjoying the moment, instead of going too far out into the future. You see what I'm saying? Don't go too far out. You're supposed to go and visit, come back, bring back some intelligence, leave some breadcrumbs back, check it out, come back." You know, if you stay gone too long, some problems gonna show up. Just like uh, in, the, in the book, the one thing he said, you know, your career is a rubber ball, but your life experiences are glass balls. You could drop your health is a glass ball. You could drop the career, and it can bounce back. That's what it does. It can bounce back. You have, a, you have a, a way to recover from that. 
but you drop your health, you might not bounce back. It can be scuffed, it can be nicked, it can be cracked, it can be shattered. So they say you gotta pay attention to those, your relationships with your family and loved ones. Those relationships can be nicked, can be scuffed, can be cracked, can be shattered. They don't bounce back, it's easy. But not at all. So, where your priorities gonna be at? That's what we gotta do. It's all about priorities, why you doing the thing, why you own the planet. It's all about purpose. So, knowing that, then the career is just a vehicle in order to nurture the other ones. But it can't be at the expense of the other ones. I'm just thinking, you know, getting some more clarity, some more focus. So when I go in to work, I'm, I'm ready. I think I'm ready. At least for the day, right? It's one thing Tuesdays. So I'm going to pull that 4 watt and do it to it. And hey, what about you? You know what I'm going to do. What about you? You need to do it to your life. Just do it to life. Like I tell my daughter she was doing something. And I said, why don't you do that right now? She said, no, nah, you know, it's, it's, it's easy like that. I said, oh, I know it's quote unquote different. Oh, it is different. I said, no, nah, it's the same thing. All the stuff is the same thing. It's all the same thing. It's just got different clothes on it, different color. Because we all human. It ain't different. So we do the same thing. So if we doing the same thing, then the solutions should be the same. Yeah, it should be. It should be. It is. The solution is the same. It is. I think so. Well, anyway, you know what I'm going to do. So I need you to go ahead and do what you do. Do it to your life. Do it to that like button. Do it to that subscribe. Do it to that share. Leave some comments. You know, I'm going to start reading comments. Once that comment muscle get built up, I'm going to start reading some comments. But until then, do it to it. Peace out. Do it to life.